Welcome everyone, this is episode 9 of the Transmaxing podcast. Today's topic is voice training and we have a new participant going by the alias Jungle Bunny. Let's start this right now. Awesome. Hi guys. So I guess voice training, the best way to start would be is like to figure out what kind of voice you want to emulate. Like for me personally, like you want to have like a voice inspo like, to know where you are going because you can't like have get to your destination if you know where the destination is. <laughs> so it could be like literally an anime girl or anything. Like it just could be an ideal voice you're trying to go for because like the what you're gonna learn from that voice as like imitating it or like following it or like, trying to figure out how to like go from there is um how you want your pattern and like tone to be like your speech pattern. So I think that's the biggest thing as far as feminization of your voice goes is like the pattern and the tone. Like you could really have like a feminine deep voice and still sound passable and stuff. Like. Sounding like Mickey Mouse or sounding like the highest voice possible won't always make you sound the most feminine. Like, there's like a hard tone, which will be like more aggressive or like traditionally masculine, like tone of speech. Think of like a rapper or I don't know, like a Limberjack or something. Like, they talk very, not like when women talk, they usually talk more melodiously, like more sing songy, but like a harsh tone will be just like a flat tone. Like, let me give an example. Okay, this is my voice. I'm not really talking in like any type of like sing songy voice or anything. It's just very flat and very like, and not like it's not like a, the deepest voice or anything. But since it sounds so flat, it sounded more masculine. Also, having a higher pitch would help as far as voice foundation goes, but it's not the only thing that's important. But like, if you want to start with improving like the pitch of your voice, you would basically try like talking in your head voice which is basically like when you picture like most people that are like male or masculine talk they talk from their chest so it'll be like when you talk you'll be vibrating from your voice like you could feel the vibration in your chest when you speak like this so you'll try to raise it higher and higher and higher till you feel like you're in your head voice like that and like once you picture like the voice raising into your head your head voice you would try to move it forward in your mind which basically changes like the tone the way it sounds. So like this is just really high, but when I move it further higher up in front of my face, it sounds more feminine and like less like big and weird sounding. That makes any sense. <laughs> Does anyone else have like anything to say about it? So what is your opinion when it comes to like recording yourself and other ways of getting feedback? What do you think is like the best way of like getting over like cringing at your own voice? Honestly, you really don't need to, like, record yourself. Because, like, the progress you have is, like, you're going to move at your own pace. Like, honestly, I wouldn't expect to, like, sound, like, a difference within, like, a day or something. So, constantly recording yourself over and over again is just going to make you get stressed out and stuff. So, I would probably do, like, monthly or, like, probably even, like, yearly updates. That makes more sense, honestly. Like, record the first time you do it and then, like, I don't know, six to five, ten months later, you record it then. Because, like, it's more just comfortably speaking versus, like, oh, your ideal voice, honestly. Like, for me, talking, like, comfortably is going to be more realistic to do on a daily basis. Like, talking in a high voice like this all the time, like, I'm, like, a cute girl. Like, oh, my God. That's, like, really unrealistic, and you're just going to stress yourself out. So, like, I guess just don't... I wouldn't record yourself, honestly. I don't think that's realistic. There's also, like, apps you can use, too, instead. Like, I know there's one on, like, Android and Apple. I think it's called, like, Voice Pitch Analyzer. And, like, I guess that would be the best way to, like, know what, like, to track your progress, honestly, because you don't really have to hear your voice. You could just see if it's in, like, a male or, like, female pitch, typically. Well, you just said that most of it is resonance, though. Wouldn't it be important to know if you're, like, hitting the right resonance rather than the right pitch? Well, there's no way to really track that, honestly. Like, the resonance will be, like... "Mm." Yeah, never mind. You're right. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, I I get what you mean, though. Is like, you shouldn't focus on listening to yourself too much unless, you know, you're trying new voices. I'd say that's the most important time to 
you know, see if you're like getting close. And then ex exactly how you said, like longer months between for the checkup to see if it sounds better or worse or like what you might want to do to like try to make it better. Mm hmm. Exactly. You like worded that so perfectly. <laughs> so ultimately you're looking for long term changes. Mm hmm. And like, okay. honestly, it's just a, like a habit thing. Like once you talk in the voice, it's just gonna become normal for you. Like talking in a deeper voice is gonna feel abnormal and it's gonna just become your normal life. Yeah. Absolutely. Like you're just gonna speak and it's almost gonna come out like that. <laughs> so do you think VR chat would be like a good place to see if your voice actually passes as a woman? Honestly, that's perfect. Like, cause like there's no physical interpretation. Cause like if you have, you look more masculine and you have like a very stereotypical passable feminine voice, no one's really gonna perceive you like, oh, it's a passing voice. So it's gonna oh, you're gay or something, or like you're feminine. But like if you're in VR chat and they only hear your voice, that's the perfect way to like, you know, tell if you pass or not, because where your voice goes. Also, phone calls. Like, I don't know. I'm, I, the idea is you'll be living full time as a woman or whatever, as far as transitioning goes. So, if you're doing a phone call, just like talk in the most feminine way you can. And if someone calls you ma'am or sir, you'll know like where you're going. You don't have to like hear yourself to like, you know, know your progress. I dread that. I mean, but. You're gonna have to talk like that eventually to like the providers or wherever you're going to, so you want to get not, used to not, it. Not like actually <laughs> doing it. It's just the concept of phone calls. I just can't stand it. Oh uh, my god! No, there's so anxiety inducing. Yeah. Like exactly. I have phone anxiety too. <laughs> Should there be effort put into like unusual or uncomfortable uses of the voice? You know, like yelling or screaming and like coughing and stuff like that. What What's your opinion well, on that? I think those, because, like, there's a lot of methods to, like, imp like feminize your coughing or yelling, but they don't always work for everyone, honestly. Like, especially if you're caught off guard, like, literally, you might still scream in, like, your original voice, honestly. Yeah. I guess, like, as far as screaming goes... Like you wanna scream, like you wanna scream in a falsetto voice, basically. Like I don't think screaming in like your head voice will really change the way it sounds. You might just sound like more flamboyant. If that makes any sense? Because when you speak like in your head voice, right, and like you move your like head voice forward, like it's kind of not really like high, honestly. It's just more just like higher than your traditional voice you have, like if you were just like still living as male or masculine. So if you're screaming like ah. That sounds more feminine, like, ah! Oh. <laughs> so, like, the second one will be my head voice, and the first one will be falsetto. I think one sounds more feminine than the other. But you wouldn't want to speak in falsetto on a regular basis, though. Just, like, when you're screaming. And when you cough or sneeze, I just try to hold in as much as possible. Like, like sneezing, like, or it's like, Argh! that's, like, a pretty big difference, you know? But honestly, I don't think people really clock you on your sneezes or, like, coughs or anything. Because, like, I've seen some coughs, like, super loud and the sneeze, like, super loud. And I don't think people think, like, oh, that's super masculine or anything. So, so I have never seen a massive difference in, like, actual practices in the voice. But do you, like, have any suggestions on, like, actual practices of your voice to, like, help get used to, like more feminine sort of shape and stuff like that? Well, as far as like like tone and like resonance, honestly, trying to sound like more flamboyant or like quote unquote sounding gay honestly helps because like the difference between a gay voice and like a feminine and female voice is just like pitch and like the resonance combined. Like a gay voice or flamboyant voice is just like the resonance with like a lower pitch. So like, oh my god, talking like this and like being like a little flaming fairy or whatever, like talking like higher, honestly, is just feminine. <laughs> so you could try to like, I guess, sound more flamboyant or like be more theatrical with your, your like words. Because like women, when they like speak, they definitely like focus on like certain like words when they like speak. So let's say especially or like they might put an emphasis on certain things, you know? So like putting emphasis on the words, being more sing-songy. I think that's what you could practice. So you could try, like, singing, like, speaking these, like, patterns. Like, I know there's, like, the, um, fire, heat, flame, water or something. 
we were look it up real quick. It's like it's certain, like, like rhyming, like nursery rhymes honestly could help because like they kind of have a sing songy way they sound because like the way they like rhyme and stuff. So that could be a big help, definitely. So you'd say the biggest practices to do would be just to like try to reinforce the feminine behavior? Mm-hmm, definitely. Okay. Because I see like a lot of like girls like trying to like have like the highest voice possible like because they think that sounds feminine. <laughs> but it just comes off like not, this comes off like Mickey Mouse honestly, <laughs> in my personal opinion. Speaking of mini M- Mickey Mouse, do you, what is your opinion on voice surgery? Do you think it's worth it? I've heard from like okay. many people that it's just like you still have to voice train. It's not great. Maybe if you have like a very deep voice, it'd be worth it. But that's about it. I feel like it's only worth it if you have an extremely deep voice, like to the point where like no, you can't. Really, you feel like it's physically painful to raise your pitch. Because the only the only thing the surgery does is raise your pitch permanently. So I guess if like you've practiced like for years trying to like raise your pitch and it's just impossible and like you get you got all the resonance down you got the inflection you got like the tone perfectly down but you just can't raise your pitch i think that's the only way it'll really be like worth it because if you have like a high voice and you still like you know don't lean on to speak like a woman or speak feminine you're just gonna sound gay honestly or you might sound like mickey mouse still like i know a couple girls that like literally after they got the surgery done they still have to go to voice training so there's really no difference and they really didn't have any masculine voices to start with, so it really just is a waste of money, in my opinion. <laughs> um, I was under the impression that you could also have your larynx like moved higher, which would change the resonance as uh, instead of the pitch. Well, it won't. Hmm. I mean, it does change it, but like the change is like. It really definitely depends on your starting point, honestly. So, like, the resonance would change, too. But it wouldn't be a significant change that, like, you'll sound completely female just after surgery. No, it just reduces, like, that overall volume past the voice cords. Mm Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I guess this one might not be too much on the table for you, but I what I heard from someone else is that it limits your range of voice, so that's why it'd be... Another reason why it'd be bad is you're just intentionally, like handicapping your voice and to yeah like, you literally playing. cannot go like once you get it like there's very limited like options on how you can speak honestly because they're shrunken basically your vocal cords are like yeah. mass ball. <laughs> and to segue into this do you think that voice training for trans is a good like stepping stone for getting into voice acting or do you care too much about voice acting in general should i say i mean not really, not really much but i think if you want to voice act Voice training is like amazing because if you have to have control of your voice to make it higher, it probably is like a less learning curve to make it deeper or make it change like a certain type of voice you're going for. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's a great idea. Cause like the vocal control you have via voice training, like it definitely helps a lot. Like some people can like go from their masculine deep voice to like a feminine voice and go back and forth. Like that's definitely like powerful. And if you keep practicing, that definitely is like possible too. One final question I see from the chat, it was a little while ago, but what are like some of the more immediate challenges for people who are starting to voice train and like where should beginners start? Definitely getting to your head voice because like it definitely makes everything a lot easier, like the visualization of it. Because once you get to your head voice, you could understand what's hard for you and what's easy for you to do. So like Let's say I'm like have a super deep, deep masculine voice, right? And I really do not know how to make my like, anything higher, make voice higher at all, and make it sound like feminine at all. Just speaking in my head voice like this, this sounds like so much more feminine altogether. And sure, it doesn't sound like you know like a normal person speaking, but it definitely makes everything else easier because you can understand if you need to raise it higher or lower or like. Understand like how you're not gonna tra- how to train without straining your voice. I think that's like the biggest thing, because like anyone could talk in a super girly voice at their practice, but can you like do it comfortably for hours on end? And like once you get to your head voice, you can understand like how far you could go as far as like training goes. I don't know if that answered the question though. <laughs> Sorry, I like that answer. 
I know for me personally, I know this one you may disagree with. I think a good head start is, you know, being able to like tolerate your voice to see what you actually sound like a good starting point to like, you know, understand if the voice changes you're making is actually doing something worthwhile. And the other one is like, (laughs) I think another one is like messing with your voice in general, like being able to like produce a lot of different voices and like have an awareness of what muscles you're moving and stuff would be another good starting point. Mm-hmm. I agree. That's a good starting point, too. Because, like, if you could, like, dig different voices, like, making a feminine voice should be pretty easy, honestly. <laughs> yeah. But the right direction will be a lot easier if you know the muscles that you're moving rather than, you know, just starting from someone who just does a normal voice and nothing else. Yeah, I'm jealous people like giving multiple voices. I can only talk the way I talk now. <laughs> it's impressive. Yeah, I'm I'm very interested in trying to get like more different cis passing voices. I know mm-hmm. I don't sound the best right now. I'm a little tired and no, you, you sound don't have fine water. Well. <laughs> uh, you thank sound you. Fine. Does anyone like, else have any questions? Or like anything to add? <laughs> I'm guessing not. <laughs> No, I think we've done well. Thanks to everyone for listening. I hope you have a lovely day forward. This has been episode 9 of the Transmarketing Podcast. Please remember to like, share, subscribe and press the bell button for notifications.